Hello, and it's 11 o'clock, so are we all here? I think all the participants starting to be here, so maybe we can start our lessons. Yep, so sorry. Um, uh, first, um, short in introduction. My name is Hermanni Kauranen, and I'm here at uh, Vamia in Finland in our uh, meeting room, running this lesson with my colleague Sami. Syvaoja. Hello, hello. Staring. Yes, we are in a different positions. Uh, Herman is in the school area. And because of the COVID virus, I'm at home on distant learning. But we're going to go this one through together through these uh, magician things on the internet. Yeah. So we are here. Uh, Teaching, I'm teaching tourism at the moment, and Sami is mainly focusing the kitchen work with the international students. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's say I think if everybody who's with us just quickly say hello, so we can hear that you are here. Yes, I'm here. My name is Sonfield. Nice to see you all. Hi. Hello. 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 My name is Mart. I'm here. Hello. Hello. My name is Katrin. Nice to see you. Hello. Good morning. Morning, George. Morning, chefs. Hi. Good morning. Yep. Hello. So, oh, uh, I think everybody can uh, see us and hear us. So, and whenever you have a question, do not hesitate to ask or raise the arm uh, and then, then ask. You can interrupt our presentation at any given moment. It, it's just like a normal classroom situation. When you have something to ask, please do it. Um, yeah, and there's two options. You can just follow your screen or you can also follow uh, this presentation or this lesson uh, in this Tinglink environment and where you find it, uh, it follows here. So first you have Google, so you can open a new page or if you are using an app, so you can open a web browser. And we have a page called Cooking for the Future. Cooking for the Future. And I think easiest way is to Google that. And then you will find the link cookingforthefuture.net and from there you can end up to our cooking for the future uh, project website there's all the latest news a uh, lot of feeds a lot of current information around the europe related to the cooking and also learning how to cook how to develop yourself professionally. But what we are today most interested in are the modules. So in this project, we have created different uh, learning modules. Uh, the personal branding and marketing, module number one, that we went through last time. And today is the module number two, local food creating menus. And that's our interest. So when you click that, you will find uh, two Tinglink platforms. One is uh, part one, based on future cooking, cooking competition event. And then part number two, pop-up event. Due to the situation, 
uh, we are combining these two. So the first goal was to have two separate events, but now we combine these two. So we have pop-up event uh, cooking competition. So the cooking competition uh, originally was more uh, traditional. So start their main course dessert uh, dining. So fine dining and the pop-up more casual, something that we eat with the fingers, but nobody wants to eat with the fingers anymore during COVID. And I think uh, after that, so we combine these two. So the menu that we are going to create is a pop-up menu, but we eat with fork and knives. So, but we don't sit on the table with tablecloths and stuff like that. Okay, so let's start our journey. And like I said, if there is something you want to ask, something, uh, some challenges with the uh, technical issues or something like that, just let us know if something doesn't go the way you hope it would. Yes, and okay. in this in this presentation also, if it's leaving badly behind because we just tried out in the morning and it's just leaving a bit behind. So if it's leaving, then just let us know. Yeah, if we have connection challenges. Okay, in this picture, this is a picture of the uh, one of the kitchens here in Vamia, in our school. So this course itself, uh, today we are going to spend like two and a half hours with it. So, but the whole module is worth of several weeks. So we are not going to go through all of it, just the necessary stuff that you need for your blog and then the pop-up competition event to come later on. Okay. So if you go straight to the business, we start from the uh, locality, the concept of locality in food, food making, because uh, the pop-up event, the dishes which you are going to create, it should be based on locality. And now we start defining what the locality means. And why you have tomatoes in here? There's a lot of uh, tomato producers around Vasa. So it's a local dish, local uh, or local ingredients. And at this point, so, and always from the number one, like, you know, you get the idea of what's in this uh, part. So part one, present the locality in one's food making. So in this session, you will learn what the concept of locality means in menu planning. And now the pre-task was, okay, there is a, Argo, you have something to ask. Are you sharing the screen? Uh, not at the moment. We are going to share the screen. Uh, I'm just showing the overall stuff, but when we need more detailed information, then Sami is going to share the screen. Microsoft Teams does not show anything. I cannot see. I can only see uh, Sami. How many others don't see? Okay. So you are not seeing my uh, video. So you are not seeing my... No. Try I... to find Herman and can you enlarge my... Um, how do I do this? Yeah, that was a good thing. Good point, really good point. I can see uh, two people uh, using video cams only. If it's all, then it's a good. Yes, you see one in a chef jacket and me without it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. the background, uh, background, what's in it written, I cannot uh, read it. Focus yeah. on it. Yes, no problem. I will share the contents later on from here. Maybe we can do that one now, Herman. They just meant that they don't focus on it. They can't see it clearly. No, oh, we can do it the way, yes. 
Yeah, Sami, I mean, you can start sharing the. I share the content so you can see it better on it. And we can focus on that. But one. The videos, but now the challenge is that the videos doesn't work. Yes. So here we are. Now you can see it better. Unfortunately, this one will leaving a bit behind. So I try to be as smooth as I can with that one. Just Hermani, tell me when you see the tomatoes. Yeah, it's OK. And now we go back to this one that Hermani just talked about. About the info. So in this session, you always have an information package, what it's including and what kind of things you will learn through that uh, concept. So in this session, you will learn what the concept of locality means in menu planning. And that's the idea, that's the goal where we are heading. So defining locality and all the red spots that you can see in this picture is like extra material that will help you and guiding you through the basic things. So when you go on your own time after the lessons, you can research all the information that you can have from this one. With, with Herman, we're going to go through today only the basics of these that we will need for the job. So first of all, we have the tasks of locality here that we're going to go through today. Then we are going to have the locality in food making. Then we're going to go also through this one. And then we are going to have a video about visiting local producers that I really hope that it works today. But first of all, when we're starting out with this one is uh, locality in food making. It might be that you don't see it straight away, so I have to wait you for a while. No, it's OK. Uh, the local producer. Do you see it now? Not yet. The challenge is this. Just tell me when you see it so I can start up with it. Now you have the presentation. Yes, it's on. Yes. Do you see the first slide? Yes, chef. Yes, right. chef. So let's continue. The partners are here, always on starting point with Tartu, Trali, Omnia, Ikaslan and Vamia. So the Vamia presenting is today on this point. And when we start to talking about the implementing story to the menu is that the story inside of it is so effective on marketing that it increases the interest and helps to connect with your customers. So this is an, a, a new day trend on food making and everything that we do. So the storytelling is a good tool to make it impossible and uh, and uh, to how to how to build up the story inside of these these things. So it gives you an idea and a model how to do this and how to create it on a possible best way. So it's kind of a, like a marketing tool, as it says. It needs a lot of things and, and ideas to collect the. Uh, your own ideas to make it. When you are implementing the story, it's always a benefit also to the menus and everything that around it. So when you go to the restaurant, you want more than a few nice words to get you inside of it. You need a story. You need to be welcomed to the restaurant and feel comfortable on the area. So you need emotions. And a story that will appeal from you from the first moment you walk into the restaurant. So you feel like a part of the family. 
and you think that you are more than welcome every time when you go around. Maybe sometimes they even remember your name. So take the advantage of that brand story, the storytelling, in the perfect tool to perform that. So create a story around your food. Make your subjects feel like your, her, he or she is a part of the restaurant, part of this nice idea, part of the story, and part of your food making. So then you need feel more than welcome to get back in any time you want. That implementing thing is a really, really big deal on, on restaurant food making and restaurant world in these days because it's become the biggest trend. So build your story around the people, what the people really want to hear, how cozy the atmosphere can be, and define your target on audience. Therefore, you should listen carefully what they are people are saying about the communities and about the things that they really want in your restaurant. Because who you want to do the food, who you want to do the stories and implementing things, of course, it's your customers. So this is how you see the types of stories causing a positive reactions, positive atmosphere, and the, in the same way, a good business. So when we are building the storytelling strategy, you need to be sure that they related the real facts in the story. The story is not uh, a fairy tale or something that you just invent. There need to be some kind of a thing inside of it, like it can based on ingredients that you are using. It can based on the things that helps you creating more independent and organized ideas around the menu. So that the stories are basically the community expects. They want to hear more about uh, the information about the, the food that they are, uh, are, are eating, how you invent, how you create the things that they eat, how they combine it together, and what are the benefits of the menu. So who will always make the stories? Who will tell them? The chefs are busy. OK, they can come now and then pop up in the restaurant telling about the food, of course, but the waiters are still the best storytellers. They tell the stories behind the food and the ingredients, so they need to also know about the food, how it tastes, where it comes from, and what kind of a benefits you can have it around it. They tell you the visitors about the details, influence it of cooking, and therefore you should train them before the actual event. The story is about your food and that customers are interested about that one. It's the basic idea, the basic things that you need to do. So when they hear your story, the customers have only, only one problem, which dish to take and in which order, when I get back again to get the rest of the food. So those are the only things that matters. So what makes you a unique? Why you have always the restaurant full? The story is trigger emotions that you have to create stories about what you talk at audience likes. So however, it's not enough to just say what they want to hear if you don't have to highlight for some of those best qualities. That's why you need to intense them with the stories and show them how different you are from the others. How your restaurant will be the coziest, the nicest place to be. And there's a plenty of restaurants serving good food around you, believe me. So you need something to back up. You need that atmosphere, you need story, you need a good, good feeling about food making and cozy home idea. So however, only in your restaurant will they find something unique. That's the only place to go and the only place where you can have the unique ideas. So we made 
with her money, this kind of uh, ideas and feelings about the restaurant quality and the story, how much the implemented story actually will give benefits to the restaurants. So there's something to think about now when we are start creating these kind of things around your menu, your ideas and your uh, restaurant through, through this idea. So that's something to think about. How to go forward with that one is when we go back to the main target, you, do you see the main with the tomatoes, Hermanni? Yes, we do. Okay, everybody's able to see me? Yes. From the front and so if we go to the videos because through sharing the screen, uh, sharing these 360 videos is, is too slow. So that's why uh, we do it like this. So we have the, and of course, if you don't see this video that well, you can use your own browser, okay? So do you know how you should be able to now to find this homepage? You choose the first one, the A, where we have tomatoes. And from the tomatoes, we have this visiting local producer 360 degree video. And in there, you can see uh, when we did visit this local producer, what they are doing in here at the moment, they are cleaning these black roots. And uh, here we have the owner. Krista Pinne. And from the next video, if you check the YouTube uh, link from our example here, meaning there's a video, you can see actually how close it is. Okay, this could be a little bit fast, but Sami is driving from the farm to the restaurant where they uh, <laughs> provide ingredients. <clears throat> Okay, journey might be feeling long at the moment, but if you are really driving, it's just uh, like 15 minutes without speeding. And there we are at the restaurant called Heim, which is a restaurant in Vasa, and they use a lot of local products. And every time when you are going through the contents of these, you can see a lot of uh, spots in the video where you can go and visit different kind of things that we are doing inside of it. So here we are in Heim, where we mostly take the ingredients from the farm that where we just were. And we're going to make some food with the chef inside of the video. And Try to find the spots also during when you are watching the video and you can find more information about the, the food. And as you see, they are preparing takeaway food and that's also the situation in, in Vasa and Finland, and not that much people are eating at the restaurant at the moment. 
challenging challenges that it's mainly uh, takeaway foods. So this is a uh, could be even. So maybe this is a little bit too much if you think about the price level, but something, uh, some idea what the outcome might be. But if we look, uh, this is something that everybody is then going to do. So we have the recipe card. We have the dish and then everybody's going to use the same uh, base for the recipe card so all the recipes will look the same we have a picture we have the ingredients and we have the methods how to use and we have the common header and the footer so picture of the uh, person involved and then all these uh, uh, credits for the project And uh, at this point, I would also like to add the pre-task for those who are part of the project was to think about what kind of local producers you have in your area. So uh, I would like to ask, so hopefully somebody will comment and share the information with us, with the others. For example, from uh, uh, Omnia. I think we have one student from the yes. uh, Omnia who was involved in the project. So did you have time to check the local producers? Uh, well, I thinking that uh, um, I have to say thinking. <laughs> I think the local I have been seen in the market. What is it available right now is, uh, as you see, here, uh, the mushroom and uh, cucumber, yeah. tomato. Of course, this uh, will be providing a uh, whole year in Finland. Okay, that's, good. That's what I see at, in, in Espo. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good place to start from. And uh, and then during this part of the, the project or this um, wholeness, so you can then slightly dig deeper and then start to build the story. But I think, yeah, uh, the mushrooms might be one place where to start from. And then if you find some really nice local producer, and then the story might start starts to build like automatically maybe around the producer or so. But of course, all the areas have their own features. Yes, I noted there are mushroom in Espo, there are mushroom farm, but I, I, I noted they have some close by in Espo produce the mushroom. I, I would check on with that. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Yes. And when the story and the concept builds from the chef's own interests, like you said, then uh, most likely the, the story also and, and the complete package, so to say, is, is usually better. If it's something that we do because we have to, then I think the outcome is not as good when we are really motivated and interested. Good. And we have some students from uh, Bamia. Do you have an idea about the local producers or the local products here? For example, George, have you been using some product products while you've been working in the local kitchens or the restaurants? Uh, sure. Uh, chef, the one that I use is the yeah. At the moment, George, un George unfortunately, yes. the uh, quality of the sound, so let's try again. Hello, yes. Okay, okay now, please. Uh, yeah. Okay, now, Peter. The the one that, uh, berries. It's from the local farm here. I picked some berries last some berries last, last summer. Berries last That's summer. the one that I remember. So do you have a computer and the phone open at the same time? Uh yeah. Yeah. So you have to mute other one. 
and take the sound off from the other one. If they both have the sounds on, then it starts to circulate. Uh, is it okay now? Yes, now it's perfect. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, as, was, as I was saying, the local produce that I have used was strawberries or berries. But that was, I picked last summer, I already used some local produce that was here from Vasa. That's the one I, they, that I remember that I've used. Yeah. Yes, good. So, uh, yeah, the berries, the berries, I think, uh, for, for especially the strawberries, they are quite, they are like local product around the Finland, because I think without, if you don't think about the north, most northern parts, they are farming quite a lot of strawberries here in Finland. And then maybe people from uh, European countries, the mainland Europe, don't appreciate the strawberries that much, but here in Finland, because they are really sweet, we, we value them high, especially when we talk about desserts. And then if I talk about, for example, many European people make from the mainland Europe think that the reindeer is local food everywhere in Finland. From their point of view, it is. But then again, from if you think about Vasa, we don't have any reindeers in here, not even close. So we don't think that it's a local food. But if you think about if people from uh, other countries come in here, then we might serve reindeer as the local food so that uh it, it means that the local food the deficient de, um, definition of locality is not always the same it depends also which is our target group 